nature, knowledge. Greetings. This is Mara with the Trustees and the Cooperative Nature School here at the Trustees Moose Hill Farm in Sharon. And I would like to welcome you to another episode of Nature Knowledge. Today, I am by the Nature School, which is housed in the property's main farmhouse. And I've been noticing a lot of activity by some of our local feathered friends. I think my Nature School friends are familiar with these structures behind me. Behind me are a couple of nest boxes. They are built by humans for birds that like to build their nests inside. We call these birds cavity nesters because they like to build their nests inside cavities like these nest boxes or in natural cavities like a hole in a tree. Now the nest boxes behind me were built for a very specific bird, the Eastern Bluebird. Why? Well, last century, the population of the Eastern Bluebird dropped significantly and humans wanted to help this beautiful bird survive. Now, why did their numbers dwindle? Well, there are many factors, but the main factor is they didn't have enough cavities to nest in. So why weren't there enough nesting cavities for the Eastern Bluebird? Well, uh, two reasons primarily. Uh, one is that non-native bird species like the European Starling and the House Sparrow, they were introduced to this area and they are also cavity nesters. So they were using up a lot of the prime nesting cavity real estate in this area. And bluebirds can't make their own cavities. They have to rely on rotting trees or woodpeckers to make the cavities for them to use. So that was a problem. Another problem is that the Eastern Bluebird really enjoys open areas with some woodlands nearby. And when humans were doing a lot of farming, they really thrived because pasture land was a nice habitat for them. But now those places are hard to come by, making areas for them to, to nest in harder to come by. But human built nest boxes, like the ones we have here at Moose Hill Farm, have done a lot for the Eastern Bluebird. Now their numbers are increasing, which is fabulous. Now, some of the nest boxes here at the farm are not occupied by Eastern Bluebirds. There are other local cavity nesters like house wren or tree swallows that will use these nest boxes. Of course, not all birds build their nests in cavities. Some birds may choose to build their nest on a tree branch or in a shrub or on a cliff or on the ground or, or just about anywhere really, including our school. That's right. Some of our local feathered friends have decided to build their nests on our school. A while back, I noticed some birds flying out from underneath an overhang on the school. So I went to investigate and I discovered a lovely moss covered nest under the eaves that I think belongs to some Eastern Phoebes. Across from that nest was another nest I think belongs to some house finches and they built their nest on an old nest that I think belonged to either Eastern Phoebes or perhaps barn swallows. Now, when I made the discovery, I took a couple of photos because I wanted to share them with you, but now I am staying away because birds build nests for a reason. Do you remember why? They build nests to lay eggs, to keep those eggs warm and to raise their young safely. So if I get too close to the nest, I may make the parent birds afraid, forcing them to abandon the nest and dooming the eggs or baby birds. And I do not want that to happen. So if you come to the farm to look at the birds and the nests, 
please stay a safe distance away and make sure to bring your binoculars. There is another nest related topic I wanted to mention, courtship. When birds want to find mates, they may use courtship displays or techniques to communicate with each other. And there are all different types of courtship displays or techniques that birds will use. Some uh, may sing, which is why we hear so much bird song this time of year. Some may preen, uh, which means to uh, fix and clean the feathers. Some may show off uh, their feathers and physique. Some may uh, offer food or show their awesome construction skills in building a nest. Um, and some may even dance, and some use a combination of these techniques. The male bluebird will try to attract a mate to a nesting cavity by uh, perching nearby and maybe fluffing his beautiful blue feathers, which are quite impressive. And he may bring some building materials for a nest in and out of, of the cavity, which the female may like, although she's the one that does the building of the nest. And those house finches I mentioned who are nesting on our school, the male, he does quite the courtship display. He does something called the butterfly flight. So what he will do is he will soar high into the air and glide down gently, just like a butterfly, singing his heart out the whole time. Now, I think that's pretty impressive but maybe not as impressive as another um, avian star here on the farm, the American woodcock. Okay, friends, uh, right now I'm by one of the farm's pastures. And if you had come to this pasture maybe about a month ago at sunset or maybe even sunrise, you may have heard some funny noises coming from the pastures. It turns out the American woodcock, which some people call timber doodles, they really love the farm's pastures and they use the pastures to do their sky dance. That sounds fabulous, right? Well, it is. The male timber doodle will make this funny nasally ink sound. Let me play it for you so you can hear it yourself. You hear that funny nasally sound? The male timber doodle will make that sound and then periodically launch himself way high into the air. He'll go up in these large circles until he gets maybe 200 feet or more and then He'll come back down in a zigzag fashion and land almost exactly where he started. That is quite a feat. As for the nest, well, the timber doodles, the female, will just build a nest on the ground, a simple little depression covered with leaves, and that suits her purposes. Friends, there's one more thing I want to share with you about the timber doodles. They have this wonderful bobbing motion they make when they're searching for food. Scientists think it may help them to locate worms, which they love to eat, but it just brings me a terrific amount of joy. It goes something like this. Maybe you can try that dance at home. Okay, friends, the birds we learned about today, the Eastern Bluebird, the House Finch, the American Woodcock, uh, they are very busy this time of year, finding mates, building nests, uh, raising their young, and they are just part of the many, many wonderful things that make Moose Hill Farm a special place. And I encourage you to come and see for yourself. That's it for this episode of Nature Knowledge. Now that you have the knowledge, 
I encourage you to go and explore and let me know what you discover.